I changed my life by changing my thoughts. And in this video, I'm going to explain the science behind how this works and how you can use it to make major improvements in your quality of life. Now, I wasn't an athletic kid growing up. Despite what you may have read on Wikipedia, not all black people are good at basketball. I was trash at anything that required coordination and agility. But in high school, I did find out I could run a 4640 and I wasn't too bad when I played defensive end. But all my football heads out there watching this know that's not really a skill position. I carried that same lack of athleticism into boxing. I started boxing at 22 and my footwork was so terrible that there are early fights where I actually trip over myself and fall. As long as they didn't move, I could knock anybody out. But the minute they demonstrated the slightest evasive prowess, I started falling over my own feet. I started to adopt the image of a guy who was just going to be a slugger and never learn the sweet science of hitting and not getting hit. I believed that maybe one day eventually get better, but it wasn't clear how that was going to happen. And I wasn't confident that I'd be able to figure out boxing anyway. This is the same mindset I had towards mathematics and academics in general. Here's a little known fact about me. Even many of my close friends aren't aware of this. I actually didn't graduate from high school. I failed a bunch of classes, and when I got the opportunity to make up the classes that I needed to graduate, I got caught plagiarizing an essay, and the school district immediately failed me. I tried community college a few times afterwards, but I failed there as well. So at 22, my self-confidence was in the toilet. I was dumb, and I wasn't a good athlete, but something changed along the way. <clears throat> Eventually, I went on to win a state Golden Glove title and a national title in boxing, earn a sponsorship, and become the number four ranked heavyweight by USA Boxing as an amateur. Along the way, I eventually earned a degree in physics with a minor in mathematics. So let's get into what I did to change my situation and how you can apply it to change your own. You have to remember something. Your life is a reflection of your thoughts, and those thoughts dictate the actions you take or don't take. At least this is the commonly accepted wisdom everyone uh, passes around from your manifestation coaches to your best-selling authors or professional athletes. I used to bond to this idea wholeheartedly, but the older I became, the more I learned and the more I began to disagree. Now, don't get me wrong. Not only is there nothing wrong with policing your thought patterns for malicious and self-destructive ideas, I think it is absolutely necessary to do so. In this modern era, our psyches are constantly under attack by negative news designed to scare us into complacency, anger, or irrationality. However, you don't build a positive life by blocking out negative thoughts. You block out negative thoughts by creating a positive life. Your actions are not a reflection of your thoughts. Your thoughts are a reflection of your actions. Before we go any further, now is a perfect time to thank today's sponsor, Morningwood. Now, speaking of taking action, today's sponsor is a product that has been tremendously helpful in keeping me going with this crazy workload that I have lately. Morningwood, and don't censor me YouTube, that's the name of the product, has been crucial for maintaining my training schedule while writing, shooting videos, and training for my return to boxing. Everything surrounding the release of my new book and keeping up with my toddler son's endless bounds of energy. Morningwood was created by a firefighter who understands the demands of performing under sleep deprivation, and it has been a game changer. The comprehensive blend of nootropics, amino acids, and electrolytes has made a noticeable difference in my energy levels and training quality, especially when I'd rather stay in bed, but I know I've got to get up and take advantage of the precious two hours before my son wakes up and rains hell on the whole house. Morningwood supports both mental clarity for writing and physical performance for boxing, exactly what I need when life demands everything at once. Plus, this actually tastes pretty good, which is kind of rare in this category. And although Morning, Morningwood is a sponsor, I love this product so much that I reached out to them and asked if they'd be interested in sponsoring some content. Congratulations, Morningwood. You're my first sponsor on this channel. Now, I don't make many guarantees, but this can easily replace your morning coffee and improve your performance in the gym at the same time. 
And if you want to pick up a bottle of Morning Wood, use the link in the pinned comment or the description and use discount code ED10 to get 10% off your order. It's not a replacement for getting a good night's rest, but when coffee just isn't cutting it anymore, Morning Wood will keep your performance high when your energy levels are running low. Now, back to this discussion on changing your thoughts by changing your actions. Here's a useful fact that Big Pharma would rather you not know. Exercise is the most powerful treatment we have for depression. This isn't just bro science hyperbole or unfounded pseudoscience babble designed to piss off the internet. A landmark 2016 meta-analysis published by the Journal of Clinical Psychiatry Reviewing over 25 years of research found that regular exercise was comparable to antidepressant medication for mild and moderate depression, with some studies showing superior long-term outcomes. Even more remarkably, participants who engaged in supervised exercise programs showed a 40 to 50% reduction in depressive symptoms compared to control groups. Numerous studies have shown that physical activity outperforms pharmacological intervention and therapy and it's not just depression we've seen this effect against. Exercise also comes up big against anxiety and other psychological distress. I don't bring this up to disparage other forms of treatment or to downplay the debilitating effects of depression. I mention this because it's vital to the point I'm making, and there are two other fascinating pieces of research I want to point out first before I get there. The first is that people who undergo cosmetic surgery experience an immediate and persistent increase in self-esteem and self-image. A comprehensive 2020 study in the Journal of Plastic and Reconstructive Surgery followed 550 cosmetic surgery patients over five years and found that 87% reported sustained improvements in self-esteem, with those benefits remaining stable even years after the procedures. That alone is fascinating, but my second piece of research ties it together with another powerful observation. People who have a higher self-image outperform those who don't in all metrics on quality of life. Based on a meta-analysis and research review by Orthon Robbins, individuals with higher self-esteem show consistently better life outcomes across multiple domains. Large-scale longitudinal research found that a higher self-esteem predicts a greater education attainment, increased income, and more satisfying relationships, even when controlling for factors like social and economic status and intelligence and gender. Now, your first thought might be that researchers have the relationship direction wrong. It's not that people with high self-esteem have better outcomes, but rather people who are better looking and have better outcomes in life. We do know, for example, that more attractive people tend to earn more and have more opportunities for romantic relationships. While this definitely plays a part, natural physical beauty is not the only place a person derives confidence from, especially if they're self-conscious about themselves as many teenagers are. While it's not necessary to go through something as drastic as plastic surgery or liposuction to change the outcome of your life, it's clear that changing your physical appearance has dramatic effects on your life, and those effects are rooted in the self-confidence you develop as a result of feeling better about yourself. And look, I'm not saying that your appearance is the root of all confidence, but it plays a tremendous role in how you feel about yourself. You don't need to spend thousands of dollars or go into the knife to change how you feel about yourself any more than you need to use SSRIs to alleviate your depression. And no, this is not medical advice. I'm just a dude who studied physics in college, learned how to read research papers, and has an opinion. And my opinion is that you can get the similar benefits from training your body. The confidence that a person builds in themselves from training is different, and that confidence is earned and it persists throughout your life. Again, this is not bro science psychobabble. Many studies have tracked the correlation between self-esteem and physical habits. For instance, a 2023 study at Eastern Washington University found that students who engaged in regular physical activity scored significantly higher on confidence measures compared to their less active peers. And I'm going to nerd out here for a minute on the numbers. This result wasn't just chance. The correlation was statistically significant with a p-value of 0.035 meaning there was only a 3.5% probability that this relationship occurred according to random chance. Or to put it another way, we can be 96.5% confident that there's a real connection between regular exercise, training, and higher self-confidence levels. And notice that I use the word train, not just work out. Working out is great for you and you will derive several benefits. Your physical health will improve, your self-esteem will rise, and if you stick with it long enough, 
the world will eventually notice that your appearance has changed. However, training will give you all of those plus one more thing that merely working out does not give you an objectively measurable, independently verifiable metric of success. If you train to run a marathon, you either complete the marathon without walking or you don't. If you're training to reach a certain time in a marathon, you either hit it or you don't. Running is just an example, but this applies to any physical endeavor. Aiming to add a new PR on the bench, get ready for a fight, or reach a certain body fat percentage, either you do it or you don't. Introducing a specific target to hit gives you feedback on whether you are progressing, plateauing, or regressing. Training to reach a goal often requires putting your emotions in second place and relying on your discipline and willpower at times when you'd rather do anything but train. As long as you aren't sick or injured, all you need is dedication and determination to get your workout and when, you ha- when your motivation and inspiration have failed you. When you change your mindset from working out to training, you get the same benefits as someone who improves their appearance, even if you hate every second of the process. And once you reach the goal, regardless of how you'll feel, how you feel, you'll have changed your body and trained your mind at the same time. But most importantly, to circle back to the point I made at the beginning, you have changed your environment because your environment will change how it reacts to you. Many of the benefits that come from higher self-esteem and self-confidence will be bestowed upon you. While you can slack off and regress to what you were once were before you changed your body, you'll be less inclined to because your actions have created a mindset of discipline in the pursuit of an objective marker of excellence. It's easier to act yourself into a new way of thinking than think yourself into a new way of action. This is because your thoughts, no matter how intense and focused they are, are just thoughts. Without any action behind them, they can do nothing. On the flip side, if you take a certain action enough times, then you start to take on the characteristics of a person who acts that way. This is what psychologists call self-perception theory. We develop our attitudes and beliefs about ourselves by observing our behavior, much like how we form impressions of others by watching what they do. Rather than our actions flowing from pre-existing attitudes, We often form our self-concept by looking at our actions and concluding, I must be this kind of person because this is what I do. When I first stepped into the boxing gym, I described myself as not really a fighter. But as I put in the rounds on the heavy bag, mastered my combinations, and gradually developed my technique, something shifted. It wasn't just my physical conditioning improving. My entire self-image transformed. By the time I had my first amateur bout, I wasn't just someone who had completed a boxing match. I had become a boxer. This was self-perception theory in action, and I would later apply it to my academic endeavors. In high school, I stared at math problems like they were written in hieroglyphics. I failed most of my math classes, and I technically didn't even graduate from high school. I tried to learn a few more times at community college after I graduated, but I failed every time. Until my fourth try. By that time, I had transformed my inner, uh, my identity from a guy who had never fought to a full-fledged national champion boxer. I figured that if I did this with my body, I could do it with my mind as well. So I started practicing math the way I practiced boxing. I did every practice problem, checked out every library book, and watched every lecture I could find, and I refused to move on until I understood each concept. I wasn't just trying to pass math class. I was trying to become a math person who faced equations with curiosity instead of fear. By the time I was tackling quantum mechanics and deriving electromagnetic field equations in my physics degree, I wasn't just solving complex math problems. I had become a math guy. The scared guy who once thought they were bad at math had transformed into a physicist who could navigate multiple dimensions of calculus as naturally as walking. Training creates a powerful feedback loop between actions and identity. When you consistently show up, even when motivation fails, you begin to see yourself as someone who honors commitments. When you hit a new personal record, you accumulate evidence for your capacity for growth. The objective metrics aren't just measuring physical progress. They're building a new narrative about who you are. Compare two people who want to become more disciplined. The first spends time visualizing success, reciting affirmations, and waiting to feel ready. The second simply wakes up at 5 a.m. 
to train regardless of how they feel. The person, the first person remains in the realm of intentions, while the second is actively becoming more disciplined through their actions. Over time, the second person doesn't need to convince themselves they're disciplined. Their actions have already proved it. This is why waiting to feel ready or trying to perfect your mindset before taking action is hustling backwards. The mindset you want will emerge naturally from consistent action. Your brain, observing your behavior, updates your self-image to match what you actually do, not what you think about doing. While positive thinking has its place, it only works when combined with action. You don't need to think yourself into a new person. You need to act like it. Your actions will change your environment. Your environment will change how others react to you. And those reactions will transform how you see yourself. The path to lasting change isn't through your thoughts. It's through your actions. Start there and let your mindset catch up. For more information on the specific actions you should take if you want to make a change in your life, watch this video here.